Welcome back to What's Next Garage. Today we're putting on the valley cover and valve covers. When you don't pay attention, unfortunately, you have to redo things. And I didn't notice that piece of blue paper towel, well, until a little bit later in the process. Oh no! Ah, so in what's next garage fashion, we take it back off. Oh, that would have sucked. Now I gotta pull it all up again. Nervous. I don't know how many times I can sing praise to this cordless ratchet, but they really do work nice. And they're not anywhere near as loud as an air ratchet. I had a little tail of this caught underneath, right on the 135 cylinder. Little piece, it would have definitely been bad. So we zip these bolts back down, we're tightening it down in a sequence. And then we just put a final torque on it and we move on to the next step. So I put in a new oil pressure sensor so I don't have to go back in there the hard way. Yep, okay. And it has thread paste on it. And then look at that, it's perfectly oriented. Well, come on now. Yep. Lucky me. I just gotta remember that this guy stays up somewhere where he's visible. It's gotta be for something there. Okay, probably valve covers, then intake. So now we'll put the valve covers on because these are tight, this is tight, these are all torqued. Heads are all torqued down. All right, we're getting close. So this kit came with these valve cover bolt gaskets. So I'm just placing them. A little bit of oil. Whoa! It's kind of, oops, slippery. Put that baby in there. that then it's going into it's a little stamped in boss there and it goes into this groove that goes pretty easy oh there we go and that's one I'll just get the other one and we'll hammer that out this is the driver's side valve cover and for some reason it was much dirtier than the passenger side. And it could be because the PCV valve is up there. Not sure. This baffle, which captures oil and then it's supposed to run down and come out right here in this little, this drill hole. So I'll do a little bit of, I'll do a little bit of flushing. I think I'll put this in the coolant tank and uh, try and flush out behind this baffle guy I bought it from 
said, you know, it never burned oil on them. So that's a good sign, because this isn't, this little hole, this drill hole is not plugged up. Um, but it doesn't hurt, seeing as it's out here, just do some flushing in there. There's some yuck, there's yuck in there, but be hard to get in there, but we'll get in there. Best way to get behind this baffle is to use brake clean and the straw. That way I can get a bunch of brake clean back there and then I'll just slosh it back and forth, rinse out as much as I can. And then here I'm just repeating the process that I did on the first head, pulling the old rubber gasket off and putting the new rubber gasket on. The new valve cover gaskets had kind of a memory to them from being in the packaging for so long. And once you try to form them over the top, it would pull up on the other side, so I had to go get some grease. And I tried using some grease in there. Gonna have to be careful and verify that these ends don't pop out All right so if I flip this upside down is any of that going to come out well we might as well go put it on I uh, just had to manipulate it in and then you you kind of stretch the gasket a little bit We put some more assembly lube on there. One final go at it. And once I set that valve cover down, and I'm sure that the valve cover gasket is definitely not popped out of the groove, then I go ahead and tighten it up. I don't like the way that rubber gasket kind of bulged out of there a little bit. He's in there all the way. He looks good. Yeah, it's in there. So the, the, the rubber just kind of squished out a little. This one is good all the way around. This one wasn't exactly what I wanted to see. That one rubber grommet sure did give me a hard time here, but I eventually got it. The most important part of the valve cover gaskets was ensuring that they definitely were held in place and that they did not come out. So, everything looks in there. This is a little bit further than I'd like to see. And it's on the back side too, lucky me. Picking these o-rings out of these blocks took a little bit of doing. I should have used a brass pick, but they were already pretty corroded and needed to be cleaned up. It's 
throw that O-ring is pretty smushed flat. So put some new O-rings and we'll clean that up. This is the difference between the two. Definitely flat. They were definitely due for replacement. And we're gonna install the steam vent plugs that go here and here. So put a little O-ring lube on them. The front of the block has a steam vent crossover pipe, but I'm not going to install that until I get the intake put in place. Now just running these uh, now running these cap screws down and torquing them in place will pretty much ensure that uh, we will not get any coolant leaks in the back. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of What's Next Garage. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you stopping by. Like, share, and subscribe if you feel like it. And next week, we're going to put on the coil packs and get the intake installed. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.